My name is Zarina Aisha Marin and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to focus on how I went from a network engineer to a cloud developer. I will primarily focus on the skills that I previously possessed along with the skills I had to acquire along the way. The purpose of this video is to really shed light on the fact that a network engineer and a cloud developer do not carry the same skills, just like a data engineer and a software developer do not either. The second reason is really, well, let's be real, cloud is where it's all at right now. Therefore, I would think that this video would provide some sort of support for anyone who wishes to make a career change or start their career in the cloud. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the skills that I already had, and that is um, a computer science degree. <laughs> okay, so today there is a huge demand for IT skills. Therefore, you can obtain a career in IT without needing a degree. Although there are differing views, both in which I can appreciate. Deep down, I have to admit, my degree did set the foundations to help me pick up a new skill later down in my career. For example, when I was in university, before cloud was even a thing, you could hardly even find resources online for cloud. You know, today we can find so many videos online on YouTube. There's even dedicated cloud uh, platforms. But back then, that, that didn't exist and that was not even that long ago. However, I, for my dissertation, I hosted a game uh, a game application, a mobile game application that I programmed in C Sharp within Unity onto an Amazon EC2 instance. So that definitely was a learning experience for me because I had to really go out of my way to find out how to do that. And that was for my dissertation. And that is a skill that really helped me also get into the cloud. I was also able to pick up object-oriented programming. Yes, just like anyone who studies computer science. <laughs> I also learned how to code in Java, and both of these skills are important to be a cloud developer. Started my career as a backend developer. It was a nice one-year placement as part of my bachelor's degree. I worked as, um, like I said, backend developer, mostly working on Linux, Sybase SQL, and Perl scripting. Although SQL is not relevant as a cloud developer, it is important to understand how it works. This is because you will have to understand, especially when performing cloud migrations, which database um, is the best to suggest for building and deploying. And the experience I gained on how to use Linux bash scripting was also very helpful. So uh, that's because scripting is a prime skill to pick up when troubleshooting or creating desired custom scripts for virtual machines. So I then went back to uni and I finished my final year and then I graduated. After I graduated, I joined a specialized group within a consulting firm dedicated for managing infrastructure, whether it was on-premise or cloud. I was initially in charge of managing network connectivity between the company's, well, a client's uh, cloud environment and uh, their on-premise environment. This involved activities such as being able to, um, well, ensuring that the IPsec tunnel was always available or the public VPN endpoint and ensuring that it just didn't go down. I was a one-person team, very stressful, but I learned a lot. In this role, I also learned about troubleshooting traffic that did not make its way to on-premise or to the cloud through checking firewall rules, overlapping subnets, routing tables, the internet key exchange. I was then made to be in charge of building the network connectivity between the cloud environment um, and the clients on-premise as well as their clients on premise known as B2B business to business. I also gained the opportunity to mimic some resources not available on the cloud, such as building proxy servers, 
implementing Google MFA um, and um, installing test instances for OpenVPN, uh, which is on a Linux machine. So that was really great. I, I really learned a lot about what is on premise that we can then build onto the cloud. I then kind of moved up in the world in terms of <laughs> responsibilities by being given the chance to build a new landing zone from scratch. And a landing zone is essentially a blueprint um, of your cloud infrastructure, so your cloud environment. And this involved designing the VNet, so the virtual network, the subnets, the connectivity, the firewalls, DNS, Active Directory, the different various environments such as production, pre-prod, uh, the, the testing environments, and also the types of machines that we would need. Uh, what type of Linux machines, so what images within Linux, what type of uh, Windows machines, is it a Win, Win uh, 19, Windows 19 machine, or an R2 Win 12 machine. And this is a skill that to be honest, is required mostly by a cloud architect. However, it is useful to have if you plan to be a cloud developer. I then decided to really just throw away the whole cloud concept because I noticed that there was an area that I really wanted to fill and that was hardcore networks. And the reason why is because cloud really is so beautiful. It covers it all um, away from you and so you you don't really see what happens in the background in terms of the actual physical hardware. And so I decided to become a hands-on network engineer. Actually, it is what I wanted to initially do, but when you work in a consulting firm, life doesn't go the way you plan. <laughs> so for about two and a half years, I traveled to data centers and comms rooms, so server rooms, communication rooms, is what it's called. And I performed audits, reckon stacks, which means taking out end of life uh, devices and replacing them, doing patch cabling, um, replacing line cards. I performed failover tests. I also worked remotely on switches, Cisco switches and routers, as well as Fortinet firewalls and uh, F5 IP, uh, big IP appliances. All of which I have to say made me very extremely confident and a well-rounded infrastructure engineer, whether it was on cloud or on premise, because I felt as, as though I had both experience to basically say, guys, I know what I'm talking about here. Now, like I said, even though I may have acquired quite a few skills, or quite a lot actually, from um, my previous experience. Uh, and yes, it did help with my transition to be a cloud developer because it's not like I went ham and didn't have any cloud experience. There were still many skills that I needed to obtain, especially if I was to be employed as an experienced hire. So, you know, I also had to remind myself that I had lost quite a few skills from focusing heavily on being a network engineer for two and a half years. So I pretty much shut my brain and said, networks, networks, networks. So <laughs> one of the skills was programming. So one of the programming languages that comes up a lot is C Sharp. And although I had used this in university, I unfortunately forgot how to really be a good programmer, especially in C Sharp. So as a skill, I needed to refresh in, in, in just programming in general. Um, luckily, I remembered how to program. And therefore, when it came to pick up, picking up other languages as well, so, such as um, HCL, um, the HashiCorp language, uh, Terraform, I was able to pick that up extremely fast. And to be honest, Terraform isn't, it can be a bit wild. <laughs> it's It can be a, a bit wild sometimes, but as a starting point, Terraform is not. It's, it's just fun and yeah. Anyway, so scripting is another skill. 
I had experience with Windows PowerShell, um, but I wasn't an expert. And so I had to really ensure that I was confident with that. Also, there's AZ CLI. So I was working with Azure and Azure has their own command line interface. And there's also Azure PowerShell. So this was a skill that I needed to pick up along with reading and um, implementing ARM templates, which is essentially JSON. And ARM templates can be crazy when you have nested ARM templates. So that was, it depends what kind of cloud developer you want to go for. But I'm, uh, for me, I'm speaking for Azure. And for Azure, um, these are the tools that I really needed to pick up. Now, the third skill was cloud native resources. So in the three years, I had stopped using Azure Cloud. And so when I had my first role, I was honestly very shocked to see how fast um, Azure Microsoft has has been in updating all of their resources within the cloud and all of the new resources that they had essentially created. And I'll give you an example. An example is when I was working in my first role um, after I graduated within the cloud, we were using something called TFS, Team Foundation Server, and we were using that to build and deploy code. Now, I was okay so i was familiar with using tfs however this tool changed they replaced it and they made it more fancy and honestly it looks it's way better than what tfs was um and they mean they replaced it with azure devops and azure devops um has elements of what tfs had but they built upon it and they created this really cool tool and as a consequence i had to upskill very fast and i had to like learn this tool but not just this tool there were a whole bunch of other tools and nowadays a lot of companies are making use of the new um the new features that azure has to provide and as a consequence that means you have to go out and learn it quickly so that you know how to to build something um, useful for the client using this tool the fourth skill that I had to um, acquire was CICD so for instance let's start off with uh, get right um, where are you going to host your code is it going to be on a repository within um, GitLab or uh, GitHub or any other tool now I am familiar with using Git however I wasn't very hands-on with using Git um, command line tools and again there are some developers that never use get command line tool or get command line cli they use the the gui to uh, add their add their files or their changes and then commit it and push it and there's also loads of um, guidelines you need to follow such as feature branches and stuff like that so i was i had to learn how to use get um on the cli and that was for me because i wasn't just learning one thing i was learning a trillion things all at once whilst also being on a project it was overwhelming but it paid off at the end um so this is one tool that i i would recommend that you go about and learn um and then jenkins again jenkins isn't new it's not new at all. However, some companies like to still use Jenkins as if it is new. And um, so you learn how to use Jenkins. It's it's not hard until you're probably creating pipelines. Um, but yeah, learn Jenkins. Another one was for me, which was cloud specific, was Azure DevOps, like I said. Um, so yeah, that was another thing that I learned about release pipelines and all of that but not learning just not just learning for the sake of it but learning how to use it so those are the tools really i use pretty much every day therefore i can only recommend it overall i was fortunate enough 
want to already have experience in the cloud using cloud however like i said the tools and past experience that i have shared in this video i hope that um yeah i think overall i hope this can help you if you are looking to transition as um, a cloud developer or you just want to start your career now in the cloud and one other skill I, I don't know if it's a skill uh, but it's more like something to have and it's something that I did not have the only thing the only certificate that I had before I became a cloud developer was CCNA and to be honest CCNA is a hard exam um, well at least when I did it and it really sets the foundations of what is to come like it, in in terms of networks in the cloud and if you could do your ccna then you can you can do cloud in in my humble opinion and the certificates that i then had to obtain but i I got them while I was a cloud developer was, um, I have so many certificates now. I have a few Azure cloud certificates. I have a Terraform certificate actually, which was really good and helpful. And I have a Google cloud certificate as well. So again, you don't need this to be a cloud developer, but then again, I think because I had cloud experience, that's why the cloud certificates weren't that important. But if you don't have cloud experience, then I would definitely recommend that you get uh, some certificates within cloud. Okay, I hope this video was useful. If so,